It's a day before the new pack is coming to Master Duel and we were able to hit Diamond rank 1 pretty easily on another 4 win streak after losing our first match in Diamond uh, 2. We went on a 4 win streak once again to hit Tier 1. Debating if I want to try to go through Master because with the new pack and Kashtira coming, you're going to be struggling a lot with this deck because Kashtira Fenrir can easily just banish your one and only Empin face down and then it's a really hard uh, uphill battle from there to try to come back and win that match. The best cards against Kashtira when they come will be Book of Moon and uh, Unexplored Winds. Because they don't have a Rise Heart, their end boards will essentially consist of the main deck Kashtira monsters, which in some respect is actually stronger than a Rise Heart. Uh, but don't get me wrong, a Rise Heart is definitely super broken. Um, but yeah, Floundries will struggle a little bit against Kashtira. Not really for the fact that you'll face the Kashtira deck directly, but more so because Fenrir will be put into almost every single deck. Um, and we have yet to see if all of the spells and traps are coming for Kashtira. So if things like Birth and Race Thoth, the, the field spell come, I mean, they limited all the other field spells. I don't, I can't imagine they, they don't limit Race Thoth as well. Otherwise, you know, you have three Rotas in the deck for Fenrir, which would be devastating. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these diamond matches that got us into rank one. So after coming off a four win streak in Diamond 3 to hit Diamond 2, this was our first match in Diamond 2 and we won the coin toss, which was great. However, we are bricked, which is unfortunate. Um, we're gonna go ahead and activate Unexplored Wind, so we do reveal what we're on, putting back the Snowl, attempting to draw one, and unbrick. But again, it's a pretty wild long shot because not even an Advent of Adventure unbricks you here, or an Eaglin, you essentially need uh, a Robina, so one of three. I activate Book of Moon and um, you can't activate Shifter because of Fissure being up. So again, slight conflict of cards here. Shifter would have been better to activate before Fissure. I, I'd rather keep this in hand actually looking back. And the reason is because I'd rather for their traps here to get banished so that they can't reset them and they can't use something like Holotea to banish from the graveyard. So it didn't end up making a difference because as you can see, we remain bricked and next turn the opponent's gonna be able to OTK with Adipus. So that's a GG, we just end up resigning and take that loss due to a brick. In this next matchup here, we draw a really good hand after bricking the previous match and we go first again. So of course, we're gonna start off with Extravagance and that baits the opponent's Ash. They're, open, they're on 60 cards, so I don't anticipate that they're also on Imperm. It'd be pretty wild if they you know, play three Imperm, three Ash and had both in hand in a 60 card deck, like both in their opening hand. So I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm like, that's great. Uh, I don't have to worry about Ash negating the duality or my smaller birds. The duality doesn't reveal anything of major significance. So we just uh, take the Apex, activate the, the Deep Fissure, and then summon Robina. What's wild about this opponent's deck list, I don't know why they resigned. I guess their hand was just really bad, but um, they actually were playing Balderoach, which means they're likely playing Zombie World. And if you put this up against Flawandries, it's pretty much GG's. Like if you don't have a way to out this, which in my deck, I don't think I really do. I don't know, I have to go back and double check, but uh, you don't really see this card, but it's definitely a card that as soon as you put this up, I lose, right? And I think you're likely playing, yeah, Necroworld Banshee. So you just need a way to get to your branded fusion uh, in order to dump Necroworld Banshee, banish it, put up Zombie World, and then I lose. So I don't know why they resigned. Um, but it, it is, and you know, they could have milled it with all the issues or the um, tailing cards as well, right? So I don't know, I think the opponent could have stayed in that one and probably won, but they just ended up resigning, so we will take those. All right, the Diamond 2 run is looking pretty easy so far. We have gone first three times in a row now. This is crazy. So our opening hand here, half decent. We do need to unbrick uh, because again, we open Eaglin, but hey, that's why we play pot cards. The opponent reveals Gamma on the Shifter, which I'm like, that's totally fine. And I'm kind of thinking like, what deck would really play Gamma right now? Um, but I end up trying into Advent and Robina, which is absolutely crazy. So the luck is definitely on our side here. We summon Robina, grab Toucan, go Eaglin, and we're essentially just gonna go full rotation. Uh, once we see the opponent, I guess is not on Ash or, well, Imperm would be turned off because of the Gamma. Uh, we are fine to go full combo here. So we're gonna go ahead now, activate Advent to grab Map, Map reveal Toucan, banish Tree, and just get another rotation of Empin. Now, I've talked about this in previous videos. You can make a decision if you want to play it risky and go for an unexplored wind search off of this Empin now uh, to set up all of your spells and traps, or go for another Advent of Adventure to try to play around uh, evenly matched. 
And the tell here from my opponent is if you're playing Gamma, I'm gonna make see I'm gonna assume that it's less likely that you're unevenly matched because you're more about hand traps over board breakers. So I end up going for unexplored wins because of that reason, and we set up a very, very strong setup here, and we are under shifter as well. The opponent reveals Sword Soul, uh, well, Tenyi, so they're on Sword Soul most likely, and I think they kind of realize there's nothing they can do because of Shifter, the Trap card, Unexplored Wins, Empin, so they just end up scooping it up there. And finally, on the Rank Up game, I was fully expected to go second, expecting to go second, but our opening hand is absolutely crazy to go first with once again, so this is like four or five times going first in a row, which is nuts. This just means that, you know, when I get to Diamond 1, which, you know, I am at now, uh, my first match in Diamond 1, second match in Diamond 1, etc. They're all going to be going second. So, uh, yeah, Konami a little frustrating, but it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, the Gold Sark dumps the Eaglin, so we chain block. Summon Eaglin, if it gets Ash, it's totally fine because we have Advent still. But we're going to be able to search out and summon the Emp in here. And again, this opening hand is so strong. And we have the Call by for the Ash Blossom anyways, if the opponent did have it. So we're going to go ahead, activate Advent now, search map, and do exactly what we did. I think the last game, activate map, reveal the token, banish Street, grab back the Emp and off the Tukin, put Street back on board, and we'll probably banish that Advent. So if we need to recur it next turn, we can. And then bring back Empin and search for, are we going to be greedy and search for unexplored wins or go for Advent of Adventure to protect against evenly matched? We are feeling greedy these days. Um, so we end up sending the Book of Moon and the um, Dreaming Town here. The opponent sets five and sets one monster and passes and I'm like okay probably not stun like what else could this be um so of course we're gonna activate dreaming town and the goal here now is well we don't have to worry about ash obviously but um we're gonna search apex and use unexplored wins to out one of the opponent's cards and we reveal that they are on dynamorphia of course so interesting um you know outing one of their cards with unexplored wins is pretty big uh Apex Avion on field will negate another spell or trap as long as it's not a counter trap. The mistake I make here is not tributing over the Eaglin, um, which I should have done because I don't need Robina really. I, ha I literally have every bird. So if I bring back Robina, summon Robina, I have to search for an Eaglin. Not that it's really all that meaningful because you know the opponent's back row will interrupt anyways, whether I summon Eaglin or Robina to search for Eaglin. Um, so it's, yeah, neither here nor there. So we're gonna draw, we end up drawing the Eaglin anyway, so I'm like, okay, sure. We're gonna attempt to activate map. The opponent chains the Dynamorphia Fusion Trap, Frenzy. Okay, brings out Kentrigina. We end up banishing Snowl because I'm like, I wanna get as much utility off of this Unexplored Wins as possible. So, you know, Eaglin, search for Ryza, um, then summon Tukin, bring back the Snowl. I still have my normal summon for turn. If I, put, if I put Snowl on board, I get two more summons. I can cycle that Ryza that I'm about to search for you know two more summons basically i can tribute off the tribute monsters as well uh, it'll be pretty easy to get it out on the board the opponent solemn judgments my eaglin so i'm like okay and it doesn't even count as it hitting the field so it just ends up going to graveyard it doesn't even get banished which is crazy summon token so i'm like that's fine token bring back the snowl the opponent has a second solemn and i'm like holy cow that's crazy um so i lose both my token and my eaglin thankfully i have strain hand so i can always banish these if i need them but I do play multiples in the deck, obviously, so um, I could search for the second token anyway. It's not too big of a deal. If the Stree got Solemn, though, that would be a problem because I only play one. Um, taking a look here, you know, we could DD Crow the Frenzy to prevent the Kentrigina from using it, but they would just quick effect chain. And funny thing, this is a cost to banish the trap. So if they activated this quick effect, I couldn't chain DD Crow and banish the Frenzy because by the time the cost of Kentrigina is paid, the trap card would be banished and they would be able to apply the effect. Saving grace here is I have the Book of Moon, which deals with the Rexterum. If they did bring it out, they attempt to activate trap tricks and I'm just gonna go ahead and negate that now. Um, probably should wait to see what they put with it, but didn't wanna risk any kind of weird shenanigans, so I just end up negating the trap tricks and the opponent just ends up scooping. I don't think the game was over there um, because again, they could have Kentrigina Rexterum. I mean, I just Book of Moon anyways, um, and then I put them on nothing, I think. Because yeah, Book of Moon, even the Empin or the uh, Eaglin here could beat over the Rex Darum when it's booked. And then the Empin takes out the Kentrigina, leave them on their face down card. Um, but yeah, I have no real follow up, but neither do they. Uh, I have to wait for the you know, pass turn to them, pass it back to me, and then 
yeah, I would just OTK them next turn if they didn't top deck something good. So that was our run into Diamond 1. Um, again, debating if I want to try to go for Master, because this deck is going to be harder and harder to play with Kashtiera coming. Um, that being said, though, we could also play another deck, but I've already voiced my opinions on switching around decks and trying to learn new ones with limited time. So that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video, though, guys. If you enjoyed it, a uh, like would be appreciated. Thank you again for watching. Quantum is out.